Hey guys, and here's part two of our tutorial. So at the end of part one, we had this basic head-up display coming up over our watch, and we'd done the motion tracking to move it around. Now you can see though that as our wrist moves, although the head-up display is moving with our wrist, the angle of our wrist changes, but our head-up display is not changing its angle. So we need to make that look a little bit more believable. You see here, it doesn't match the angle of the watch. So we're just going to do some keyframing to that. So we select it and see at the beginning here it's okay until we start to move around. So let's add in our rotation here, we add a keyframe there. Now let's go down a little bit and let's adjust our head up display so it maintains that same angle with our watch face. Let's move it over a little bit more. Again, we want to adjust the angle a little bit. So it's staying parallel with our watch face throughout. That's the effect that we want to achieve there. So let's play that again. So now the head-up display remains a little bit more in tune with our display there. So let's just adjust this a little bit, a little bit flatter. Yeah, perfect. All right. So I'm happy with that now. It's tracking quite well. Now it looks like it's a little bit too close to our watch. So I just want to raise it, raise up the display a little bit. So again, we'll go over to our project here. Um, sorry, we'll go over to our head up display and we'll just adjust the Y position a little bit. No, X position a little bit. Okay. So it looks like it's floating a little bit higher above the screen. Okay, I think I just need to adjust that rotation again. So it's just a matter of just playing around with these parameters until you get it looking as you want. So it's kind of in tune with the rest of the display. So it's all about just playing around. It depends on your own piece of video footage and how you've got it. Um, lined up but yeah something like this okay so once we're happy with the alignment and everything of that um, I might just want to adjust the brightness a little bit of this so it flashes so again we're going to add some um, randomness to our brightness so Remember we had that randomize in the last tutorial, so we're going to grab that again. We'll get um, randomize, and we're going to drop it onto our brightness there. Okay, so we'll go over to our inspector, apply to properties, uh, sorry, filters, brightness, and the brightness there. So we just want to add some randomness to our brightness setting. So it flickers a little bit around, so it doesn't look quite so constant. There. Okay, now the other thing we want to do is adjust when this comes in. So we want it to appear as we press the button there. So you can see here, you look at my finger movement. At the moment, it's appearing a little bit too soon. We want it to appear as I finish the press, so probably around there. So we'll drag our whole group over a little bit to the right there. 
So now it should appear as I press the button. Just as I release it there. Okay. All right, that looks a little bit better. Now, because we've uh, adjusted the start and end point, we just need to adjust the motion tracking again. So, uh, if at any point you need to readjust your motion tracking, we just we just delete the match move, which is there already. Go over to the library, and motion tracking, match move, and just drop it back onto our group there. Again, we adjust this, so we're going to track the corner of the five and then we'll hit analyze. So that takes a few minutes to do. I'll just pause this recording. Analyze now, so let's play this back and see how it looks. So you can see we're starting to get a pretty believable looking um, effect here. Um, now in the next tutorial, I'm going to be adding sound effects to this, and we're also going to show how we can morph then as I press the button again from one um, head-up display to the next. So uh, I hope that you found this tutorial useful, um, and join me for, for part three.